All right, so in our last section, which was the first part of 6.2, we looked at long division. Okay, this ends up being much faster. Okay, but it's totally brand new. Okay, so once you learn this process, most kids tend to prefer this method over long division, but I'm going to ask you to do both on the test. Okay, so looking at this, when we are trying to divide polynomials, so again, we're dividing one polynomial by the other, what we're going to do is just focus on the coefficients. Okay, so the coefficients are the numbers in front of your variables. So this is the setup right here, these black lines. In this upper left-hand box, you're going to put the opposite of the number right here. Okay, so right now we have a positive one. We're going to put negative one right there. Okay, and then we are going to put all of the coefficients next to that from right here. So we have 2, negative 4, and negative 8. Now this process is the same every single time. Just like with long division, once you learn the steps, it repeats over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop down the first number. And now we're going to multiply this 2 by the negative 1 in the box. Okay, so we've got negative 1 times 2, and then we'll put our answer right here. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to add. So adding right here, what do we get? Negative 6. Okay, now we're going to repeat the same thing. Take negative 1 times negative 6 and get 6, and then we're going to add. Okay, this number is your remainder. So our answer is going to be 2a. Now, the exponent on this first coefficient right here, this 2, on the a is going to be 1 less than what it started out as. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be a 1. And then minus 6 plus negative 2 over a plus 1. The remainder is just like yesterday. Well, that's your answer right there. Same one we would have gotten if we would have done long division. Okay, so let's look at this one. <clears throat> We're going to put the opposite of this in the first square in the upper left. And now we're going to list the coefficients. Now, on, just like with yesterday, we have to put zeros in as placeholders for all of the terms that are missing. Okay, so with the y to the fifth, we, we need a y to the fourth, y to the third, y to the second, y to the first, and y to the zero. So if it's missing, we put a zero in that spot. So right now, what's the coefficient right here? Okay, so we got one, and then how many zeros do we have? We got a zero and another zero because we're missing two terms in between here that aren't listed. Okay, then we have a negative three. And then what? Another zero and negative 20. Okay, we'll draw our line right here. Our remainder will always drop under the last number. We're going to repeat this over and over again. So we drop down our first number, and then we start multiplying by this one in the upper left. Okay, so we got 2 times 1 is 2. We write it right there. We add. We get 2. Repeat it again. 2 times 2, we get 4. We add to get 4. We take 2 times 4, we get 8. We add those two. We get 5. Is it making sense? Just keep repeating over and over again. 2 times 5 is 10. We add, we get 10. And then 2 times 10 is 20, which means we don't have a remainder on this one. Okay, so now we have to write the answer. Okay, so it's going to be y to the what? Yep, it's 1 less than what it started out as. Okay, so we got y to the 4th plus 2y to the third, 4y squared, 5y, plus 10. So the exponents just go in decreasing order as you go.
We good? Okay, it's a little bit easier than yesterday, right? Less steps anyway. Questions? All right, let's try this one. Now, some kids may ask, why can't we just do this all the time? Okay, synthetic division does not work very well if this right here, for instance, if it said 3C minus 1, you can't use the synthetic division very well. So long division would be if we had some a situation like that. Okay, so what numbers are going to go to the right of that square? Negative 17. Okay, we're not missing any terms on this one, right? Okay. So we draw our line, and drop down the 6, start multiplying 1 times 6, and then we add, and then we multiply, and then we add, and then we multiply, remainder of 3. So our answer would be, we're looking at the variable of c, so we got 6c squared minus 11c minus 5, and then our remainder, 3 over c minus 1. Yes? Um, good question. So we didn't put any zeros on this one. But right here, notice we don't have a y to the fourth or a y to the third term because the we look at the exponents and we need to see all of them, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way down to 0. And we were missing the y to the fourth and the y to the third, so we had to put the zeros in their place. Other questions? Okay. Now, we're going to take this a step further, which is what your assignment looks like. So your assignment is going to have you do what we were just doing, but we're going to add this step that we're going to go through right now. So given a polynomial and one of its factors, find the remaining factors. So what we're going to do is they're saying that we can divide by this, so do that with synthetic division, but then find the other two answers as well. Okay, so doing the method we just learned, we're going to take the opposite of that, and then we'll put the coefficients next to it. So we got 1, we got 3, negative 6, negative 8. All right, so we drop down the 1, and then we start multiplying. 2 times 1 is 2. We add, and we take 2 times 5 is 10, and we add 2 times 4 is 8. We don't get a remainder. So our answer would be what? 1x squared plus 5x plus 5x and then plus 4. Okay, now the answers, this is one of the factors. So essentially what we're doing is we are trying to factor this problem. One of the factors is x minus 2. Okay, we want to find the other two by looking right here and figuring out how to factor that. Well, if we do our x and we put 4 here and the 5 here, what two numbers are going to work? 4 and 1. Okay, so that means we have x plus 4, x plus 1. Okay, factoring will never go away. You'll see it next year. You'll see it in every math class you have. Okay, now we need to take it just a teeny step further by just saying what the actual number answers would be. So how did we do that? Because there's really a zero over here. We need three number answers. How would we find them? Yep, set e to each of these equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so the first answer would be 
positive 2 because you would add 2 to both sides. This is what I mean. x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0, and solve each one. Okay, so this answer would be 2. What's the next answer? Negative 4. And the last one? Negative 1. So we're going to try this one more time. So you're going to do synthetic division, and then you factor what you have left over. All right. Let's... Okay, so why am I using long division on this one? Yeah, because it's 2x plus 1 instead of just an x plus 1. That number in front of the x forces us to do this. So this will give us a good chance to review long division. And those of you that were gone, you get a little crash course on how to do this. So one of the factors is 2x plus 1. And then we're going to put this entire problem underneath our bracket. So we got 6x cubed minus 25x squared plus 2x plus 8. Okay, so our question we always ask is, how do we get the first term to look like the first term here? What would we have to multiply the 2x by? 3x squared. Okay, so if we took 2x times that 3x squared, we would get that 6x cubed right here. Okay, now with long division, whatever number you put up here, this blue 3x squared, we multiply by what's in front. So we're going to do that same thing. So we'll take 3x. We have to make sure we distribute it to both of them. And we're going to write it right here. 6x cubed and then times 1, 3x squared. Okay, in long division, we always subtract whatever we get right there. So if we subtract both of those things, we will end up with what? Negative 28 x squared, because we're subtracting this 3 right here. Okay, and then we drop down our next number. So plus 2x. And we start this whole process over again. How do we get 2x to look like negative 28x squared? We multiply by negative 14x. Okay. So we'll take this red negative 14x and we'll multiply it by both of these things. We'll get negative 28x minus 14x. And we will subtract both of those things. What do we get right here? 16. Yep, 16x. And then we drop down the 8. Okay. So we start it over again. How do we get this to look like this? What do we multiply it by? Just an 8. Okay, so we take this green 8 and we multiply it by both of these things. And we get 16x plus 8. If we subtract everything, we should get 0. Okay, they told us that one of the factors is 2x plus 8. That means that number will work without a remainder. Okay, so what we have up here is where we need to now focus our attention. So over here I'm going to get kind of a running list here. We know 2x plus 1 is one of our answers. We want to find the other two. So here's our problem up here. I'm just going to rewrite it. 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. So on these problems, when we factor... How do we get the top number? A yep, a times c, so that'd be three times eight. Get twenty-four, and then the middle number goes down here. So what two numbers work? Multiply to twenty-four, add to negative fourteen. Yep, negative two, negative twelve. Now that's not what we write in the parentheses down here, is it? We have one more step. Why do we do the window step? What tells you you need to do this? This coefficient out here means you have this added step, the window step. So this negative 2 and negative 12, 
go here with the variable attached to them. And then our original problem goes along the diagonal. Okay, so this original problem is going to go right here. So we got 3x squared minus 14x plus 8. Okay, now our answer is going to drop right on the outside. This will be one answer. This will be the other answer. We just take out what we can from each column and row. So looking at, let's start with the bottom row. What can we take out of both of these? Okay, we got a 2. What can we take out of this top row? What can we take out of here? And what about here? Now, we have negatives inside of here, so how are we going to have that in our answer? These are both negative. Okay, so we put these over here. 3x minus 2x minus 4. So this is the new part right here, this division. This factoring is not new. It's been around for months in this class. So now we just need the three answers. So we set each of them equal to zero. Okay, so what are we going to get here? I'm confident in your algebra skills where I don't need to show all the steps. Close. Negative one half. This one is what? And the last one? Four. Any questions?